Welcome back. We are coming to you live this morning from the Oracle Open World 2018 conference here in San Francisco, where CEO Mark Hurd told me that smaller and mid-sized businesses are outperforming their larger counterparts when it comes to growth. I sat down with the CEO of Oracle to get his thoughts on cybersecurity, cloud technology, but we began with his reaction to the role the Federal Reserve has played with these wild swings in markets. I think there's always concerns that the Fed sometimes, I think I've heard a stat where 36 out of 36 quarters in a row, they've, they've uh, overestimated growth. And sometimes interest rates uh, uh, moves have uh, sort of moved ahead of the growth. And that in some ways, as you know, can constrict growth. And so I think there's some concern about what happens to interest rates. Um, but still today, if you have good projects, people are investing. The economy certainly in this country is, is good. Growth in this country is, is solid particularly in small and medium business. We talk a lot about global companies and companies that have reached outside the United States. But if you look inside the United States, companies whose primary business is domestic, uh, those companies are doing quite well. So you continue to see companies increasing budgets. Tell us about the pipeline as much as you can. Well, a good example, I mean, I, I think is one metric. Uh, we, have, we bought a company called NetSuite a couple of years ago. Um, they primarily serve small and medium business, and their predominant part of their business has been in the U.S. In our Q4, which would have been the end of May, their business grew 72%. Wow. 72. Now, that wasn't just because of the economy. Some of it was we added some more salespeople and some things internally. But again, very strong growth, particularly in that small and medium business segment. They did not quite that same growth, but sort of think of it as in the low 40s in, in Q1. This is a company that's grown 15, 16% that's now just doing fantastic, and that's probably the best indicator I can give you uh, in small and medium business in this country. Is buying back stock the best use of your cash? Why not another acquisition to fill in any holes that you may see? So uh, a lot of questions at one time. I think first, our business is doing quite well. We had record cash flow last year. Uh, so when you first start with just our business is performing well and we're producing a lot of cash, uh, certainly our ability to repatriate that cash has given us uh, a lot of options in terms of how we deploy it. You know, we're certainly not against doing more acquisitions, but we have to find the right acquisition. One of the keys to the NetSuite acquisition was the fact that we bought a company that's where the market is headed not where the market was. And so for us, we have to be thoughtful about these acquisitions in the context of looking at companies that are part of where the market is going. And so when you think of it that way, there just, frankly, Maria, aren't that as many companies to buy as there was in sort of the old tech economy. So we're very, we try to be very careful about what we buy, that it makes sense strategically, and we'll still look. If we see something, you never know what we'll do. And in terms of prices for those companies that may be available out there, are they priced right or have valuations become excessive? We've never been that centric. I mean, obviously, we want to pay the least amount we can to get the most value. But in many cases, we've paid up for the best company in their segment. It's more important to us to get the right company with the right capability, with the right strategy that, that helps us than it is necessarily the price that we pay, although as you could see in the NetSuite thing, it got a little bit contentious towards the end uh, where we were going to stick to our price no matter what. But again, for us, it's getting the right fit. What's the reason for buying back all this stock? I think it's an incredible investment. Um, you know, with our It's as simple as that. Really. I mean, it, it's for us, the, our stock is going to be worth a lot more a year from now and two years from now. Um, and when you look at the return on equity that we get with that investment based on our models, we think it's an unbelievable buy. You've said that you think you can take your applications business up from, what, $11 billion in revenue all the way to $20 billion in revenue just by migrating your current customers right. onto yeah, roughly uh, right. uh, to the cloud. Roughly right. It's actually a little that. better than that. But, but, yeah, I mean, we're a little over $11 billion, and if we just moved our user base from its current on-premise environment to SaaS, our revenue would roughly double. There are still people questioning whether or not, you know, um, Tom Curian was right and whether or not you need to open up further, if you need to open up the way your competitors do. I mean, if I want to use Microsoft or AWS, I need to completely get off the Oracle database. Okay. These are two different subjects. So I think first in apps, um, I, I don't think any of that commentary or questions relates to the apps business. The apps business um, is, is really what I described. It, right. is, it is not a set of, I don't want to say this in the too harshly, but but 
the competitive set and some of the decisions of our competitors have, have frankly advantaged us. Uh, we've got the most modern, complete set of applications in the world. The debate that you're describing about, should the Oracle database run on Amazon or should it run right. on Microsoft, um, it does. So you can actually take your license for Oracle Database and move it to whatever cloud you want to. You own that license, you can host it wherever you like to. Um, there are new features that come with our cloud that aren't available on those other clouds because they're unique and embedded in our cl core cloud architecture. So that's more the debate that you see as opposed to what's in the application. Right, I understand, but I'm talking about an overall strategy for the business. I mean, is that why he left? because you, you, you were on different sides of this, whether or not to open up further? I don't remember any debate like that, zero. So, um, in, in terms of Thomas, great guy, uh, did a ton of great work, but that debate, which I saw reported a couple times, I'm not aware that any of that, frankly, ever happened. Okay, uh, is there any plans to open up further? So, um, Amazon has a database called Aurora. Um, Let's talk about the places you can run the Aurora database. I think there are uh, one, Amazon. You can't run it on premise. You can't run it in the Oracle Cloud. You can't run it in the Microsoft Cloud. The Oracle database, you can run on premise on a Dell server, an HP server, IBM server, whatever server you'd like, Oracle Exadata. You can run it in the Oracle Cloud. You can take that license to Amazon. You can take that license to Microsoft. So these, some of these points are sort of fashionable statements. I when see. you get down to the reality of it, the most portable database technology in the world is Oracle. I'm sure Microsoft would, would try to make the argument about SQL Server. The least portable environment is Amazon, where you only have one place you can run it. Talk to us about security and where the vulnerabilities are, because Larry sort of slammed Amazon and some of your competitors, as he has in the past. Um, Yes. Are there holes in some of the platforms away well, from Well, first of all, every generation of technology is traditional. One of the great things about having a Gen 2 technology that comes out now is you get the benefits of learning from all of the first generations. And so you get better at this you know, as you go. Now, also, so do the bad guys. You know, the bad guys used to be pretty easy to recognize. The bad guys, and in some cases, the bad guys have moved to other bad guys, and the bad guys and the good guys are much harder to discern today than they were even three or four years ago. Their level of sophistication has improved. So the level of security has to match that. The fact in part of Larry's keynote was that we're going to actually separate the control planes of the cloud from the actual servers that actually run the actual code. That is a big deal as you segregate those duties because if somebody can get into the common server that's got your controls in the same place as you have your data, I'm in. So there's a whole bunch of different layers to this, Maria, but I think the point in Larry's, Larry's keynote was we're addressing each of those layers with a mindful nature of security at every turn.